Welcome to the 2013 Aloha Clinic training videos. We're going to cover catch or incomplete and then later down fumble progress. Let's get started with play number one. Play number one was ruled incomplete for being out of bounds. We're going to watch this and break it down because there's a couple of things that come into play on this play that we want to discuss mechanically and rule wise. You can see here that the player is pushed from the back so if he lands out of bounds and maintains possession of the ball it's still incomplete. He would actually physically have to be picked up and carried out of bounds in order for you to have any kind of judgment relating to that type of catch. The other thing is he bobbles the ball when he lands out of bounds. So because this is the case, if you ruled him inbounds, you're going to mechanically want to stay back further so you can maintain a very good look on that out of bounds possession of the football. Play number two was ruled an incomplete pass, but it was actually a backward pass. And it's a difficult call to make, especially out of a shotgun. So if you are in a shotgun and your mechanic is not to send a wing official into the backfield, this is probably left to the referee to call. He's going to go point to point. Now the release point of the quarterback is on his right foot or where his right foot would be, so it's on the white line. And the receiver comes forward and possesses it probably a foot behind that. Now by philosophy, if you're not sure, it's incomplete. But if you have a good look at it, then uh, go ahead and let it run as a backward pass. And in this case, the defender uses an excellent technique of getting low, his head is on the side, and he punches the ball out. And that's the kind of tackling technique we're looking for with the emphasis on head injuries. Play number three was ruled an interception, fumble, and then recovery by the passing team. So an ABA, in essence, giving the offense a first down. So as you watch it in real speed, it's pretty quick that that ball's on the ground. So quick, in fact, I think the crew should probably get involved in this just from a timing aspect and wipe this out as an incomplete pass. Watch it from the end zone view. You can see it had it just a fraction of a second. So much of a fraction of a second, I went back and timed it. So I took it from this point, and when the quarterback turns, throws the ball to the first touch point, until this move here and then the punch point is one quarter of a second. That's too fast. Somebody has to save this play and make that an incomplete pass. Play number four was ruled a catch fumble and then the crew came in and discussed it and changed it to an incomplete pass. And these are some of my favorite plays because this is what we've been talking about. The officiating crew has to come together and help each other out in situations where someone has information that can prevent an error from becoming permanent. That's a great job. Result of the play with an incomplete back. pass. Kicking Second down. Here. Juggling, juggling, juggling. The ball hits the ground. Right. No, there's no doubt about it. Play number five is another great play that shows crew communication. This was originally being spotted up as an interception and probably the back judge came in and said no this is incomplete. So he came in and discussed it and made sure that things got done properly. This is a great call by the way and a really tight play, difficult one to get and you have to make sure that you are positioned so that these guys aren't blocking you out from seeing that action that resulted in the play becoming incomplete. Real nice job by the back judge and the crew. Play number six was ruled an interception and fumble when in fact it should have been ruled incomplete and there's a philosophy that backs it up perfectly. What makes this difficult is there's a pretty good amount of space between the time he first touches it and then when the ball reappears. And we have to look back on our training and remember that in order to make a catch if you're on the way to the ground, you have to maintain control of the ball to and through the ground. And this player, who is stumbling forward, going to the ground, never has complete control of it. In fact, he loses it before he hits the ground. So when you go back and look at it in slow motion, we'll see that the defender first touches the ball here at about the 21 and he stumbles forward to about the 24 where he starts to lose the ball. It looks like a longer distance because he doesn't fall until he gets to the 27, but this is an incomplete pass. Play number seven is just a classic example of a bang-bang play, incomplete, ruled properly on the field. We're seeing this more and more often now, which is great. I think everybody's used to it in the playing arena, the coaching arena, the fans, everybody. So even though he's got a foot on the ground, He's hit 
instantaneously the ball comes out incomplete pass and a nice job play number eight now this one was ruled a catch fumble and a little bit more difficult right because it's we're messing with the timeline it does come out pretty quickly I went back and timed it he had the ball for a full second but what's more important to me and why I agree this is a catch fumble is because number 13 when he first possessed the ball or first had control of it he looked at the defender and then after looking at the defender he shifted his feet a couple of times and in preparation for the defender he stuck his left arm out to prevent the defender from getting to him now when he did this the defender slid his left arm under and popped the ball out from underneath the right arm of the receiver so you can see him extend his left arm here to protect himself shifted his feet a couple of times all happens within a second it's all very quick but I like the call play number nine is a simple mechanics play it was ruled a catch should have been incomplete and we need the umpire to turn on these passes and get a look at that trap and I know this wasn't right over the center but anything that comes out level like that umpires you need to turn and focus on where it's going don't watch the ball if you watch the ball you're gonna miss the action on the ground so as soon as you see a low trajectory bullet like that you turn and you focus on the incoming receiver and you'll get it alright let's move into the down versus fumble section and then we'll follow it up and end with progress play number 10 this was ruled down and you can see by the formation we've got five in the backfield I'm not going to go into that but he was ruled down instead of ruled fumble and our philosophy is if we don't know it's a fumble and the reason the philosophy is that way is because when you go back and look at these plays 90 percent of them are fumbles so it happens so quickly and I know it's easy to anticipate or maybe your angle shows you something differently but in this case the ball is clearly out and by philosophy should be ruled a fumble if you're not sure and when you look at the backside view of this I can see the back judge might have thought the guy was down but lean on your philosophy and it will save you on many of these plays play number 11 a little bit more of the same this one I think is a little bit tighter it's on the inside harder to see so even more so train yourself to officiate utilizing not only your vision your instincts but your philosophies if you're unsure let it play out maybe somebody else can come in and save you but you can see that the ball is out before his knee is down and statistically like we talked about on the last play that's going to be true on most of them play number 12 is a quarterback fumble it's not even remotely close as to whether it's a fumble the reason I put this in is because of the recovery so the quarterback gets hit, he's stripped immediately, the defense picks up the ball and starts running, and the referee, who's pretty close to the sideline, is shutting the play down properly because the player who recovered the ball did punch a knee down after he got it. So good call by the referee. Just a little word of warning, though, on your mechanics. It gets a little crowded over there because you've got a guy on the sideline. So unless you think your quarterback is going to be going out of bounds, you really don't need to follow him all the way over to the sideline that closely give yourself a little room maybe help the crew out by having another angle but it was a good get play number 13 was a fumble near the sideline and a recovery very close to the sideline I want to talk about that and also the mechanics on it so you can see the official here is a little bit back and forth with his mechanics it was a good call I mean the defender did get the ball he's got uh, probably one foot down another foot down before he goes out but the mechanics are what I'm concerned with. So we're starting at the 14 yard line. And when that pass is thrown, maybe take that one step. That's okay. But that receiver is well within your vision. And when you move up and he starts to move back, that's the time for you to move back down the sideline. He's right there on you. And the red arrow shows probably where your view should have been in order to have the best angle at it. Yeah, you got the call right. But we want to be careful because number one, we want to protect ourselves. And number two, we want to mechanically be in the best position to make the correct call. Play number 14 is a fumble rip and strip. This is not a difficult play to officiate other than you are going to reverse your field. But you don't see this very often when progress isn't already stopped. 
And this is a good example of progress not being stopped and the defender just getting in there and taking the ball away. So it's one on one. He does not have him wrapped up. He's spinning out of it. And as he does, he just strips the ball and starts running. So, like I said, it's not one of those plays you see every day. But if you do see it and the guy's being held up by another player and another guy comes in and strip it, that's when you're going to have to make a judgment as to whether progress was stopped or whether it was actually a fumble. So, it's worth some discussion. Play number 15, we're going to move into progress. This is the probably the most basic of them all, a backfield progress spot on a sack or a, a running back tackle in the backfield. 10-yard line, that's the progress spot. So even when he gets taken down at the 7-yard line, wing guys, don't go to that false spot. Go to the first contact spot unless he breaks out of it or you rule that forward progress has been stopped uh, before he breaks out of it. 10-yard line, easy call. Play number 16 is big time play because it was ruled stopped by progress before the ball came out before he was taken to the ground. And that's a tough call to make, especially in a state championship game, which this is. So what happens was the receiver has it. He controls it clearly. He catches it, spins, gets hit, driven back two yards. He catches it there at the 36. He's driven 35. 34 and then the ball starts to come out before he hits the ground and the official ruled forward progress I love this call it's a gutsy call but if you've got it and you're confident with your judgment on that that's that's a good one to get play 17 is an airborne receiver pushed back so his progress is given to him where he's first contacted in the air and this is where cross field mechanics are critically important the near side official is coming up looking for that spot. So far side official, 49 and a half. Make sure he's up there. If he can't find you, then you come onto the field, pop your whistle a couple of times, and get him the right spot. Play number 18 is pushing back a grounded receiver. So this is a receiver, does a button hook, comes down. He is contacted initially right there at the 40, driven back to the 42 yard line. Again, far side official, this is a cross field opportunity for you to come in, pop that spot, give them the 40 yard line. That's what we need to have an accurate ruling on the progress for that play. Play number 19, a little bit more of the same. Cross field mechanics are so important, particularly in the passing and kicking games. So we got the headlinesman here. He's trying to rule whether or not the guy is inbounds or out of bounds on his own power. Second quarter, time sensitive. So he says he's inbound, so he's winding him up. He's correctly looking across the field for a spot from the line judge who should have him spotted up there at least another three yards and shutting it down because we got the first down. So communication between the wing officials and this cross field mechanic stuff is critical. Play number 20, we've got a progress spot real near the goal line on a long run. This is going to be a back judge's bread and butter if he's there, which is great. He makes a great call here. Now, the near side official is going to have a lot of work to do with that tiptoeing on the sideline, and I don't think he has a real clear view of whether the ball was extended or not. So what I'd like to see instead of you coming up here pointing and looking like you're guessing where he is, just find the back judge. If he's up with a touchdown signal, go get the ball. If he's not, run right where he is and spot the ball and raise your arm or do whatever you do to signify that's where it is. But uh, nice job by the back judge. Nice job by the line judge on that tiptoe on the sideline. Play 21 is a progress after a bobble. So the receiver goes out, he goes up for it, doesn't quite get it, he bobbles it. So we've got a couple of different spots we're thinking about because he's being driven back at the same time. So you see the bobble, then he gets it. Where is his progress spot? Well, we're going to take a look at that here. You can see the first spot is right there. I think that's the 31-yard line. And then he finally regains possession at the 27 but he's still in contact and being pushed back all the way to the 20. I was pretty impressed that they brought that ball right back to the 27. Play number 22 is interesting in that the receiver was knocked back. You could go progress, but then he breaks free, and he's not out of bounds, and, he's, and that initial push doesn't put him out of bounds. And then he's contacted again, and he steps out of bounds. So you have to make a decision. Is the initial forward progress what you're going to go with? Or are you going to give him that break free? because it didn't result in him going out of bounds. I think in this case, because he is clearly free and he regains his balance in bounds and then is recontacted and taken out of bounds, you probably lose that first forward progress spot. 
play number 23 I included because we gave them the slide progress. So especially if we have a wet field, we want to make sure we see where the guy lands right there at the 25 and not give him that extra slide distance he gets after he hits the ground and goes, as in this case when we marked him at the 23. Play number 24 in the last play. This is an interception with contact. And this one I put last because I think I might get a little bit of uh, disagreement on this. But if a defender intercepts the ball and he's then in contact with what was a receiver, then he's given the forward progress at the point of contact if that contact results in a tackle. So in this case, when the defender went up in the air, possessed the ball, came down at the five, he's in contact, and now in the process of a tackle, he gets the five-yard line because that's his forward progress, even though his original momentum is carrying him the other direction. Kind of like when a receiver does a button hook and then he's contacted and driven back, we give him the area that he reached furthest up the field, even though his initial direction was back toward his own end line. Thanks, guys and gals. That's it for this section.